This episode of Film Rides brought to you by Domain.com. Welcome to Film Ride Mondays. Today, the beanie's back. Welcome back, beanie. I'm bringing beanies back. Yeah. yeah. Question of the oneness. This question I am about to ask is no light matter. It must be answered. Pancakes or waffles? Choose wisely, young one. See, this is a serious topic. Like, he's probably joking. I'm not joking. This is, this is a no, polarizing... This is I don't think he's joking. Do you think he understands the I weight of... I think he understands the weight of this... Because you're talking about battle lines being drawn. This is serious. This is like brother against brother, and I know you're going to disagree with me. I'm going waffles. I'm going waffles all day. You're going waffles? Waffles all day long. I thought you were going to go pancakes for sure. Waffles are like, as Hedgeberg said, waffles are like pancakes with syrup traps. Well, the thing, the difference is, like, pancakes get soggy so much quicker. Like, a waffle retains its crunch it for holds, a longer period of time. And it holds the syrup. It really does. It's so great. Waffles. Rai Rai, can you share some tips about your writing techniques? See, this is a tricky thing, um, and something that I had to learn as far as writing goes is you really can't take how anybody does their thing and, and try to make it yours. It's not gonna work for you. The creative process is not a copy-paste sort of thing. You have to figure out what works best for you. Uh, some some of the greatest writers of, on the freaking planet do things that just do not work for me. It, it, I can't write that way. It's just, I can't be creative that way. But I have a way of doing it that works perfectly that might sound crazy to someone else. So me telling you how I do things really isn't gonna be that beneficial to you. You really need to find a niche for yourself. But one way that you can do that, I guess I'm kind of contradicting myself, is to hear how all these different people do different things and keep an open mind of what might work, what might not work. And then through exploring those things, you'll probably find your own. For me, um, I have to get into the mindset of it. Usually if it's comedy, I can just go with it. Film Riot has kind of conditioned me that way. I can just go write a first draft and shoot that first draft and not have to redo it. Just doing it over and over and over again, which is why I'm telling you guys, do it over and over and over again. The more you do it, the more proficient you're gonna get at it, which is why I love these Monday challenges. But when it comes to more of the dramatic stuff, the stuff I really love doing, I usually always, I pretty much always, use some kind of soundtrack to really put me in the mindset of what I know the tone is that I'm trying to write. And uh, I try to ad-lib write, you know, try to fluctuate between the character's mindset, which I think that's universal. And make sure that you know who the characters are. And they're not just, I mean, they're all your, all, all of them are your voice, but you want, don't want them all to be exactly your voice. I don't know if that really answered it. That's like the most difficult question on the planet to answer, but there's some stuff. Why won't you love me? You think I don't love you? Did you not get the letter? Did you not get the flowers? Did I not invite you to dinner? You wore a dress. Purple, if I remember right. A little cut, you fixin'. Mm. Not love you. <laughs> I adore you. What is the best thing to keep in mind when trying to pace a scene? That is another thing that's hard to answer because it totally depends on the scene. Some scenes want to be slowly paced, some want to be fast. I mean, the best thing to do is just watch movies over and over. Pay attention to how it's moving and when it's moving. And a lot of it, especially when it comes to editing, and you know, thankfully you hear a lot of editors, good editors say this, not not just me, because I used to think I was crazy and I just didn't know what I was doing, but it's, it's very much, much a gut thing for me. I feel when it's time to cut again, when it, you know, it feels too long or feels too short. And that really came over time. Most of the time though, especially when it comes to comedy, what I see wrong most of the time is just it's too slow. It's speeded up. People are taking far too long to cut away. They're taking far too long to get a scene done. Usually, if you have a nine minute short, it probably could have been seven minutes and it would have been 10 times better before that. Uh, before that. Uh, I mean, a lot of times when I'm doing comedy uh, for Film Riot, one of the things I still do is once I finish it, I go back and I see if I can trim it shorter. And I'm just always trying to trim the fat, trim the fat, trim the fat. Just get rid of as much as you possibly can. If it's not needed and if it doesn't propel a joke or propel the story forward or character, just ax it, your, your, your film, your short, your sketch, whatever it is, it'll be better for it. What type of comedy influences you? If you choose this one, give Josh a high five, just showing his hand, just his hand. I love Three Amigos, Wedding Crashers, 
Usually it's stuff like, uh, this is the end, I thought was absolutely hilarious. Comedies along those lines where something real is going on in the world, but the people that are going through it make it hilarious. I love that. Like doing a real circumstance with, with uh, just stupid characters. I think that stuff is some of the funniest. Office was a hilarious TV show. Arrested Development, stuff like that. Why don't you review new movies anymore? I have talked about this before. The main reason is because I do want to be a filmmaker and it seems like a conflict of interest to go crapping on things if I don't like it, uh, you know, when I want to make movies myself. And you know, at the end of the day, Twilight, whatever it is that I, I don't like, there's people out there who love it. It's their favorite movie. And I just, I don't know, I don't feel right about taking a dump on something that somebody else loves because, I mean, I really believe, it's no BS, I really think that if you love something, you're not wrong. Just because I hate it, you know, I'm not wrong either. It's, it's you know, art is very objective and if you were able to enjoy yourself for two hours and escape from the suck of the world, then that movie has value. And I don't, I don't really feel like tearing it apart. I don't know. There's plenty of reviewers out there that could do that. I, I don't really want to do it because even a movie that I hate, somebody loved making it and, and somebody poured their heart into and even terrible movies are hard to make. Unless it's like the Sharknado type stuff where it's purposefully terrible. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Those are hilarious. <laughs> They're hilariously horrible. And the last question, why are you so against putting your settings on auto? Because I don't want a computer doing my work for me. If you put you know, the focus on auto, you're telling the camera that it's gonna decide what the subject is and where it should pull its focus. I mean, sometimes you need that and there are some cameras coming out that have some really great uh, auto focus stuff, but even the auto white balance, all this stuff, as a cinematographer from a camera alone, if you put everything on auto, you're, half your job is being taken from you. What white balance you choose gives a tone and a feel to your setting. What exposure you use gives a tone and a feel to your setting. So what if the camera is exposing more for the sky than your subject when you want more of the subject to blow out the sky for a certain reason? The auto is just poo poo. There are times where you need to, to use it like autofocus maybe, but the rest of it should be on manual always. You should be deciding what your scene should look like, not your camera. If you are trying to create something of some kind, be it a business, be it a robot, a person, a, robot? a humanoid of some sort, do you want to hide that humanoid that you've created from scratch in the closet? No, I don't. No, you don't. What do you want? I want to reveal it to the world. You want the world to see it. Now, in our day and age, in the technological landscape that we have, what would be the best way to do that? Probably a website. Boom, which means you need a domain name and web hosting. And let me tell you something, .net's probably gonna be the best one for you. First of all, because you made a humanoid. So net already, that's like humanoid.net, you know what I mean? Like yeah, that just Skynet. that just feels sci-fi, Skynet. Skynet. Perfect Makes example. Sense. You're Makes gonna sense. figure, you're gonna find all the, just the goodness of wrapping your humanoid brand around a .net. And domain.com, they are reliable. They are very affordable. Their .NET is only $8.99 a year. My friend, Whoa. that's affordable. That is affordable. Because at this point, you probably blew all your money on making the humanoid. So, so you, you, need need to, you need to save some cash. Say that dough. Let me, let me tell you something. We can save you some more cash. Wow. Right? By using the coupon code of FilmRiot at checkout when you get your humanoid.net domain name and web hosting. So you use that coupon code. you money on, on something that's already cheap? That's right. Wow. That's, that's good. That's wow. math skills. I'm glad the tutoring's been paying off. I'm proud of you. And if you already have the .com, like humanoid, I made them and I want the world to see them.com, get the corresponding .net man. Synergy. Prote protect your brand. But if the .com's already taken, they didn't snatch up the .net, well, that's their fault. Boom. That .net, yours. You should scoop it up. So use the coupon code FILMRIDE at checkout. Get your domain name up and going and let the world know what you've created. Logo. So that's it for today, which means it's time for a short film suggestion of the week. This one is a comedy called Play by Play. It is short and definitely worth your time. I really loved it. I really don't want to say anything about it because it's very different. And you guys should just check it out because I want you to have the experience that I had is just figuring out what was going on as it went on. It's definitely dark comedy, so keep that in mind. But I dug it a lot. Check it out right here. Enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you guys next week.